Good morning, everyone. And this is again, Teacher Anna, your learning partner. So, you have learned about the subject orientation last week. Now, we are going to learn lesson number one. And this is about understanding conventions of traditional genre in fiction, drama, and poetry. So, welcome to non-creative fiction lesson one so fasten your seatbelt as we learn more about lesson one so mm -hmm. so this is about fiction drama and poetry so prepared by yours truly teacher anna now let's go to our Objective. So after this lesson or at the end of the unit, you are expected to first identify dominant literary conventions of fiction and drama, namely character, plot, setting, and theme. Second is compare and contrast how the conventions of fiction and drama are used and utilized. Third, peer edit each other's drop based on clarity of idea and choice and use of element. And fourth, revise the written piece using the literary conventions of fiction and drama. So, uh, people really communicate with one another in all kinds of ways. So they tell stories, they express their feelings and emotions, they update each other on what is happening on their personal lives. So they keep track of their observations about what is happening in the world and their surroundings. So they want to inform others about certain ideas and facts. So in this lesson, you will learn what is meant by the term genre. In addition, the main types of literary genres will describe with examples given for each. So let's go for the first one. So when we say fiction, it is a series of imagined facts which illustrates truth about human life. It is commonly called stories and can either be short or short story or rather long like novella or novel. So this fiction is the idea or gatang isip ng mga author or writer. But most likely it is about truth about human life. Okay, so when we say drama, so drama also uses the traditional conventions of fiction, but has an additional distinction characteristic of being performed or mounted on stage. So ang ka kaibahan lang ng fiction, most likely it is in books, uh, e-books, and novel but in the drama so those uh, in the written books is being performed and mounted on stage so i hope and i think that some of you are into the drama club because uh, when i was also in my high school days i was also into a drama club now let's have genre so when we say genre it means the type of art literature or music characterized by a specific form content style for example literature has four main genres so we have poetry drama fiction and nonfiction. so those are the genre so uh, since it is based on the imagination, so the subject matter in fiction works can be nearly anything. So fiction can take place in present day, uh, the future or the past. It can incorporate the most fantastical ideas or follow an everyday life. Some examples of works of fiction are legends, folk tales, fairy tales, short stories, and any novels. So for example, the popular Hunger Games and Divergent trilogies are fiction which occurs in a post-apocalyptic future. So for the elements of fiction and drama, it includes plot, setting, characters, 
and theme. So, for example, for the uh, novel or story, Hunger Games, we have plot. So, when we say plot, is the sequence of events happening in a story. So, when we plot, uh, example here for the Hunger Games, it, it was in what was once North America, the capital of Panem maintains its hold on its 12 districts by forcing them to each to select a boy and a girl called Tributes to compete in a nationally televised event called the Hunger Games. Every citizen must watch as the youths fight to the death until only one remains. So District 12, tribute Katniss Everdeen or Jennifer Lawrence has a little to rely on. So other than her hunting skills and sharp instincts in an arena where she must wage survival against love. So that is the what we call plot of the story. So that is a sequence of events. So we have also the setting. So when we say setting, it is the place and time where and when an event happens. So example of the setting in the Hunger Game. So the Hunger Games trilogy takes place in an unspecified future time in the dystopian post-apocalyptic nation of Panem located in North America. So the country consists of a wealthy capital city located in the Rocky Mountains, surrounded by 12 poorer districts. So originally it's 13 by the capital. So that is the setting of the Hunger Games. Now we also have characters. So characters are the persons who inhabit a story. So for example, in the a uh, story of Hunger Games or in the novel Hunger Games. So uh, the character or the main character there is Katniss Everdeen, Peter Miller, uh, Gail Hawthorne, Hamish Avernity, Primrose or Prim Everdeen, President Coriolanos, No, and the Tributes. So they are all the main characters. So when we say theme, it is the central idea or thesis or overall message that the story conveys. So for example here, the main themes in the Hunger Games are friendship, yeah, friendship, family, freedom versus oppression and materialism. So friendship and family Friendship and familial bonds are figured as a form of resistance. And Katniss' friendship with Gail, Pita, Sina, Hamish, and Ro help her survive the Hunger Games. So that is an example of theme. Now, let's go to the next one. So, we have here the comparison and contrast of the convention Conventions and devices between fiction. Okay, so when we say fiction, so first, fiction is generally classified as short story novel. So a short story is a brief artistic prose that a uh, form that centers on a single main accident and intends to produce a single dominant impression. So that is for the number one. So it means plays or drama, however, are generally classified into acts or major divisions. So the most common are one act play. So which has one unit of time. So na shy, one unit of time, one unit of plays, and one unit of action play. So and the three act play, which showcase a longer exposition and a theme and conflict. So most likely it is done in uh, or on the stage. There is a showcase of longer exposition of the theme and conflict. For number two, so comparison and contrast of convention and devices between fiction and drama. So ano pa yung ka uh, kaibahan nila? Second is the development of plot in both fiction and drama has a pattern. So generally daw, now ni siya ang composition sa 
uh, fiction and drama. So first is it has com exposition, the rising action, climax, yung main point na talaga ng uh, novel or story, and then the falling action, then the resolution or the denouement. So ano na yung magiging uh, ending ng story or novel. So now let's have the uh, types of character and characteristics of genres. So uh, for the, mm, let's go back there. So for the comparison to, so meron silang iba't ibang narrative devices, si fiction and drama. So first is foreshadowing. So foreshadowing is used in fiction and drama as guide or hint. So foreshadowing parang nagbibigay ka ng hint sa yung mga readers and watchers na kung ano mangyayari sa story. Irony is used both in fiction and drama when words that are uttered either by the author or the characters in the story are the opposite of what they actually mean. So it means uh, irony, yung binibigay mo information or binibigay mo na words or uttered by the author is negative. Parang kasulungat siya sa talagang nang, nangyayari or actually mean in the story. So like reading between the lines. So we have flashback. So flashback is employed by an author or a playwright through the use of a past event that will help the readers understand the present. So ito yung piniplay pa muna or sinasabi pa muna kung ano nangyayari sa past event before, para maintindihan mo yung present. So next is the conflict. So present din ito sa fiction and drama. So it provides and showcase an the opposing objective of the protagonist and the antagonist or inside the protagonist. So we also have the use of Deus Ex Machina in both fiction and drama was once a noble strategy. So today, it is a sign of weakness na in the written work. So once referring to the Greek practice of physical lowering of a god to the stage. So most likely, parang sa, sa drama, uh, like uh, lowering of the god, merong, uh, kung ito yung stage, merong lowering ng isang god or goddess. So that is Jox Ex Machina. So, so uh, nung una, it is a sign of, uh, or novel strategy talaga siya, or pinakamagandang strategy to, ano, to have a very good drama. Pero ngayon, it is a weakness na siya. It is a sign of weakness. And then, it refers to the contrived element of the plot used to solve a problem. So, yung Deus Ex Machina, ano na talaga siya? Yung binibigay niya or uh, sinusulat ng author ito para, mag, uh, para isolve yung problem. But actually, in a lot of movies nowadays, hindi na talaga or uh, let the problem problem itself <laughs> or hindi na sinasolve or going into the next level of life na lang kasi uh, it is uh, really the ano, typical human uh, realistic thing na nangyayari so that's why uh, hindi na maganda si Deus Ex Machina or hindi na siya ano, kaaya-aya sa mga viewer nowadays okay now, let's go to the types and characteristics of genres. Poet. So, that is poetry. So, as you all know, the bayan genres ng uh, literature is poetry, uh, novel, or we also have fiction and non-fiction. So, let's go to the first one, which is the poetry. So, when we say poetry, the main literary genre is poetry. So, all forms. So, ang main talaga ng, ng literary is the poetry. So, all forms share specific characteristics. For example, poetry is written in lines. So, uh, meron sa inyo sigurong gumagawa ng form. So, usually it is written in lines and stanzas instead of sentences and paragraphs. So, some forms follow strict rules as the number and length of lines and stanzas, whereas many forms are much more free-flowing. So, yung iba, uh, meron talagang uh, length of lines and stanzas, pero yung iba, free-flowing yung style nila. So, let's go 
Mm. So there are three poetry group. <clears throat> but before that, let's try to know more about the characteristic of poetry. So always remember, when we say the characteristic of poetry, poetry attempts to achieve beauty. So poetry is imaginative or makes use of the strength of imagination. So ginagawa talaga natin is uh, yung writer's or author's imagination, yun talaga yung, you know, uh, inagawa sa poetry. So, most likely, some of the poetry, hindi siya maintindihan. Lalo na pag hindi ka in love, pag wala kang familia, or you doesn't experience what the author experience. Next, uh, poetry is musical, melodic, and rhythmical too. So, that's why a lot of poetry is also used as a song or a rap. So break it down, you. <laughs> and for four, we have poetry makes use of language that is metaphorical or symbolic, not direct. So inside metaphorical shot symbolic, it is not direct. So you need to read between the lines and go deeper between uh, in its meaning. Next is yeah, poetry makes use of brevity and conciseness. Poetry is more concentrated than prose. So let's go to the group of poetry. So you need to read the example of that poetry, huh? So first is the lyrical. So we have uh, mm, poetry can be broken down into three main groups or directions. So we have lyrical, narrative, and dramatic. So traditionally, the lyric express personal emotion, the narrative profile characters through a plot, and the dramatic presented an enactment. So let's go to the first one. So when we say lyrical, it is the vast uh, majority of poems written are lyrical versa. So example nito is the Christina Rossetti, a dirge. Why were you born when the snow was falling? You should have come to the cuckoo's calling. Or when grapes are green in the cluster. Or at least when lit swallows muster. For they're far off lying from summer dying. So that is an example of a lyrical verse. So you can also uh, read that in your uh, module. So now we also have the praise song for the day. That is also an example of a lyrical poem or a lyrical verse. So it says here that American poet Elizabeth Alexander wrote a praise song for the day to read at the 2009 inauguration of America's first black president. So that is Barack Obama. So the poem does not rhyme, but it creates a song-like effect uh, through rhythmic repetition of praises. So by equine traditional African form, so Alexander paid tribute to African culture in the United States and call the people of all races to live together in peace. So say it plain that many have died for this day. Sing the names of the dead who brought us here, who laid the train tracks, raised the bridges, picked the cotton and the lettuce, built brick by brick the glittering edifices. They would then keep clean and work inside of Pray song for struggle, pray song for the day, pray song for every hand littered sign. The figuring it out at kitchen tables. So that is pray song for the day, example of a lyrical verse. So let's go to the narrative verse. So when we say narrative verse, it simply tells a story and is often, uh, often found in epic form. So epic form. So most likely it has a story. So well, the lyrical verse is it has lyrics, or it can also be translated into song, or it rhythmic songs. So for example, of narrative verse is the Iliad by Homer. So seeing goddess Achilles rage, black and mortarous, that caused the Greeks incalculable pain, pitch countless souls of heroes into hate star and left their bodies to rot as feast for dogs and birds as Zeus will was done 
begin with the clash between Agamemnon, the Greek warlord, and godlike Achilles. So that is a story of the Iliad, so which is what we call narrative verse. So you, need, you can also read that in your modules. Mm, one of the uh, examples also of the narrative verse is the Ballad of the Harp. We were by Edna Street, Vincent Malay. So try to read that in your modules. So when we say dramatic verse, it speaks to a character, although it's in two, got its beginning from music. So just like those uh, lyrical, dramatic is also came from the beginning from music and chant. So just as the lyrical and narrative verse did dramatic poetry characteristics, or characterizes the song or words. So the dramatic form, like other two, comes in all styles, shapes, and sizes. And can at the same time be dramatic, so dramatic shock. So most likely it touch your emotions, deep emotions. But it is also lyrical or narrative. So example of this is the speech of William Shakespeare, which is to be or not to be, that is the question. To be or not to be, that is the question. So this is from Hamlet, spoken by Hamlet. So you can read this one or we can read this example in your modules. That is schematic lyric. So now let's go to the last uh, topic, but which is the understanding elements and conventions of poetry. So first is imagery, figurative language, sound, and persona. So first is imagery. So the use of images is a constant in poetry. It is the lyrical representation of an experience or object that is perceived through the senses. It is presented in language in a way that we can see, smell, hear, taste, touch, or feel it as our imagination allows. So we have here, sino man yung mga visual learner dito. So this is very important, uh, in, usually in our visual readers. So, so imagery is a use of images in a constant poetry. So not just images na yung talagang picture or image talaga, but it is also the lyrical representation of experiences. You may imagine more something what is doing in that uh, poet or poem with your sense of imagination. Next is figurative language. So these are devices that help beautify or make the language more poetic that is already is. So use of figurative language, just like simile, metaphor. So those are uh, in need in a poetry para maging maganda pa yung foam. Now we also have sounds. So they create pointed and special effects in their writing that help the, re the readers in understanding the literary piece at a deeper level. So kasama din dito yung sounds. Squash, shoom, zoom. So that is an example of the sound effect. So sinasali talaga yan para yung mind mo is create ng sound and Im images sa kung ano man yung binabasa mo. So, you can also visit the site HTTPS literary devices that net that sound devices for more idea about uh, sound in a poetry. Next is, the last one is persona. So, the speaker of the poem is not necessarily the poet. So, in many cases, poets create a persona. So, kung ako yung writer, nagka-create ako ng persona. Hindi ako, maybe a person who is a police, a person who is a doctor, just like that. So, I'm creating a persona. So, a word that comes from Latin which means mask. So, persona, it comes from the Latin word which means mask. Who speaks the poem in the first person? So, parang na-experience ko talaga yun. Or sometimes, uh, the authors just observe it, not experience it. But sometimes also, the author really experience it. So, that is persona.
So that would be all for our lesson number one. So do your best and continue to make your parents proud. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. So let's do the focus questions, the related readings, and the assessment activities. See you. Bye.